Okay, all right. Hey, we have a couple notes to take. That's all we're doing today. It's kind of a light introduction day. Um, later on, later on this week, we'll eventually get homework. I don't think it's tomorrow. It might be Thursday. But at some point, you'll have another assignment this week. Um, but today, we're talking about transformations, composite functions, which we're going to do something a little bit different than what we did in pre-calc with that. I'll show you two different ways of doing those problems. And then the last one we're going to do is inverse, which we have had experience on inverse today, so we're going to do a couple practice problems doing that. This section, I, I believe, is a lot more to like pre-calc style than the other ones have been. Um, because this one gets back to the, the, the basic, it gives you a problem, it asks you to do a couple things to it. The only different one will be the composite functions. The second type we're going to do, because I'm going to do two different types with that, the second type can be kind of challenging, where you have to make your own composite. Where's the composite? We'll get to it. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Let's let's go through let's go through the first part here, and I have a couple things. I'm gonna pull some information out of your pre-calc books. What? Um, pre-calc. This is calculus. Yeah. They, they just have this really nice thing that they they have a list of like ribs that I want to talk about. All right. Okay. So transformations. Let's talk about that. Transformations. Or a way of taking a figure and moving it to a new spot. Okay. Now we're not going to do a bunch of graphing here. I just want to talk about the basic functions because you're going to see them in the composite, and I want you to know what it's doing, so you can actually see how this works. All right. So a transformation. All right. The first part. Okay. If we're going to do a shift of some type. So if we're going to do a shift, either up or down, right or left, um, the, book, the book has this weird way of describing it, but I want you to just see kind of what's going to happen here. So if it's going to go up and down. So if, if we're going to go up and down on a shift, whatever your function is, whatever that function, that formula is, they're going to either add a number to the back or they're going to subtract a number in the back of the function, and that moves that graph up or down. It's outside the parentheses. So, if let's say an example of this: if we had a if we had a function that was let's say it's three x uh, squared. You know, this is a quadratic, it's a parabola. If you add a number to the back, it moves it up. Uh, if you subtract a number in the back. Let's say we subtract 11. It's going to move the picture down. That's 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 all it is. Now, the big thing is is recognizing the original graph. The original graph is the x squared graph. That's the original function. But what they're doing is they're doing two different transformations. They're moving it down, and then this part is doing a type of shrink and stretch. And that's the next one we're going to talk about after we're done with shifting. But is there any questions with how how to recognize if it's going up or down? Now, what the book says, which I don't like, they do something like this. Why do you like them? They don't so like all here. of them. So you feel like a book or not like all of them. That's just <laughs> the book will do something like this. If they give you an f of x, and they say, you know, this is the 3x squared, and they do something like this, where they'll add, We'll add a 3 over here. Oh, no. Actually, let's, minus let's do a 31. Side. Let's do a 31. I don't know I'll make it 3 because it looks like the number of 4. All right, so yeah. let's say we're doing a 31. This this function, like what they have written here, is actually going down because what you have to do is you have to move this over to the other side so that you can get the f of x by itself. So then it's a shift down 31. Yeah, and so the idea is that this is subtracting 31. So it is an actual shift down if you can see that. Okay, there is a clear difference there between when you would move it up or down, but sometimes they write it a little bit goofy, and I always personally like to just move it to the one side in f of x by itself. That way you can actually see is it adding or subtracting on the back. Make sense? Sometimes they just have a different setup on the first prop. Okay, so that's up and down. Pretty straightforward. We did that a lot in pre cal You probably didn't have them tune out the one fine day. Yeah. Um, now, right and left. 
being colorblind is actually real. Yeah. Okay. So now, hey, right and left. If they if they are either add or subtract in the parentheses inside the parentheses. Now, this is where it gets a little weird. This is where it's almost backwards what you think it should be. If they subtract inside the parentheses with the X, it's moving it to the right. So this is moving it to the right. So my example here is if this is my original function and I want to move it to the right. So whatever this graph is, it's doing something like this. You know, this parabola. And I want to move it in this direction to the right to start to shift it, you have to subtract a number on the inside with the x, whatever that number is. So maybe I want to shift it over five spots. I'll subtract five on the inside with the x. So right is subtracting, left is adding? Yeah. How do we remember that? Number? Here's how I always think Left has it. Okay. Here's, here's my shortcut. Stop. Here's how I remember it. Whatever number you plug into the x here, oh, whatever okay. number you plug into the x that makes it back to zero, like the origin, so if I have to plug five in there to make it back to zero, that's where it's been shifted. It's been shifted over to five. So you can figure out, okay, where would five be from the origin? That's to the right. Uh, that's how I think what? I can whatever like, number you plug in here to make it zero. Well, or you just think it always has to be x minus <coughs> Five and positive right, but yeah, if you so negative, it'd be plus. Yeah, sure. You know how I remember left to right? The bumpers are on the left and the right. So that means we're moving it left to right. Okay, all right. Now, if you want to move it to the right, if you want to move it to the, I guess, the left, I should say, the left, you put a plus number in there. Because, because, yeah, I put a 15 in there. All right, so if I want to move it to the left, this number, the number that I would have to plug in here to make it back to the origin, this would have to be a negative 15 to make it back to zero. That means this graph's been shifted over 15, and it's going over to the negative 15 side, because that will make it back to zero. That's where the origin would sit, because the origin is like where the middle of the graph would be. All right, okay, question. All right, hey, if I find those on the floor. You're certain that you're killing out all these other That's the last game we have candy and I turn you on. Yeah, we're at Reese. You told me that you would volunteer as tribute. Okay. So, questions, comments, questions, comments about the transformations? No, sir. What about if you want to go diagonal? Is that a thing? That's rotating. We're not going to do that yet. Okay. Now, hey, let's, let's talk about growing and shrinking now. Growing and shrinking vertically. So, so if I have, if this is my original function, and I want to grow and shrink this problem, okay, I'm going to go back to the original. Oh, oh. So I'm going to do a growth or a shrink. Grow slash shrink. So how, how this works, if the number out front of your function is positive, like a positive number, not a not not a fraction, but a positive like whole number. That thing is going to stretch vertical. Wow. So this is a vertical stretch, <laughs> vertical growth. If the number is greater than one, if the number is between one and zero, then it's a shrink. So there's a clear cutoff. What I mean by that is if you want to put a number out front of the S of X and you want to have it like a fraction, that will shrink it down lower. So my example here, if I put that three back out front like I was doing earlier, it's now three times taller than it would have been. It stretched it vertically. So if the graph is normally this, when you put a three out front, it's now stretched it vertically. That question has nothing to do with this math. <laughs> no, it is. Why? Ask, ask why. <laughs> what if the number is exactly one? Then it will stay the same. So okay. we're done. Right. <laughs> 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 no, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. I was waiting for something. To All right. Now. Okay. 
And now if you do a fraction, it'll shrink it back down. And now it'll also, it'll look like it's wider, but it's all it's doing is taking the values and bringing them down. Right. So it's, it will look like it's compressing it, but it's really not. It's just taking like the number and going half as tall or a third as tall. So it just looks like it's widening out the bowl. That's what it's going to look like. Now, now, growth or shrink, that's vertical. If we want to do horizontal, if you want to do a horizontal growth or shrink, this is where it gets a little goofy. You said it like this four is times too much. <laughs> Well, this one in particular, it, it's not like the the left and right shift. The, the book will do this thing where, what do you say? If it's inside, it almost does the backwards of what you think it would do. So if they put a number on the inside with the X, and that number happens to be greater than one, greater than one, mind you, it's shrinking. It's going to shrink. It's going to compress it in. Wait, what? Yeah. So, yeah, it's when you put it inside the parentheses. So what I mean by that is if I did something like this, like that, I put it inside the parentheses with the X, not just on the outside, but on the inside of the parentheses with the X, and if it's a number bigger than one, it's compressing it down. How I think of this, my my rational thinking is doing something like this. The best the best way I can compare it to is when we did the sines and cosines graphs, where you know you had sines and cosines for something like that. Yeah. When you put a four on the inside, you're doing four times as many pictures. So it's not just going vertical; it's now going four times as many. So to be correct, you take the parentheses off. It's vertical. Yeah. Growing. Yeah, growing. So this thing, it's, it's basically compressing it, shrinking it in, because you're doing four times as many pictures. That's really backwards what you think it would do. Okay. Or it's just four times smaller. Four times smaller. Best way to put it. Four times smaller. Okay? So that's, that's horizontal shrinking. Now, if we want to grow, you just have to make sure that your number is, is less than one, greater than zero. So we're going to stretch it. So the idea was that, you know, I think one of the examples I did back in uh, when we were doing the, uh, the trick functions, I did like a one-seventh. That means on a normal graph, whatever you would do in one picture, like if this is one picture of sine, and you put a one-seventh in there, it's going to do one-seventh the picture what it normally would. It's stretched out basically seven times further than what it normally would. Because you're only seeing one seventh the picture in its normal time frame. I am not. I shouldn't say. I shouldn't say it's smaller. It's just one seventh the picture. Whatever that is. So then it could put in one. Put in one and be the normal picture. Yeah, it's gonna be one. No, no, no. I mean, like, why are you plug in one to the x? So why is it being one seventh? This is where you're stretching it. Horizontally, you're stretching it, you're growing it. It's going longer. Um, I'm talking about like if we were doing the normal like sine function, where the sine function goes up and down, if I were to put a one seventh, you'd only see one seventh of that normal picture. So it would, it would keep going, it would go down and up, but it's seven times longer than what it should have been. And yes, if you put a one, it's the normal picture. All right. Zero. Zero. Cancels out now. It's just a it's a constant function. Just a line. Questions. Okay, is that one I was actually. Is like, your what, ring what was zero times any? Okay. I have a question. Is, is your ring finger? Depends. Is it a zero or a negative zero? Your ring finger. Okay. 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 So let's go to round two here. Oh, round two. Oh, All right. Hey, round two now. That was only round one. Okay, we talked about all the growing and shrinking. We talked about all the different transformations. Pretty straightforward. Now we got to talk about composites. All right. This is the part where you're going to see some of this transformation stuff inside these problems. 
So what I'm talking about here is if when they do something like this, f of x, uh, let's go with 5x squared. Okay, this problem, and it could be anything you want, this problem is a composite function. There is a function inside of another function. Okay? Um, if you can see it. Now, this is the part where it can be goofy. Okay, what I mean by that is that what the book will actually do is two different things. We'll do the normal composite stuff we did in pre-calc, which I'll show you here in a second. And then they're going to ask you another thing where they want you to take a problem like this and figure out what the part should have been originally. So what I mean is that they might do something like this. They'll say W is the 5x. They'll do a substitution. Where they'll put a W squared in here. Instead of the 5x in there, they'll put a W. And this item is now a function of W, where W is 5x, where they want you to write it like this. Where they want you to figure out what the original part that they plugged in and what the original function should have been. So then that w equals so is, Yeah, so this is my example. This is what the problem is giving you in the book. And they want you to break it down into the individual parts that they had plugged in. It could be multiple items. You could be doing three or four things to a problem where you're trying to figure out the individual parts so that you can break it down into individual letters. And where I came up with the W, that was just a made up letter. I just picked a random letter of the alphabet. I wouldn't use X. I, could, um, I wouldn't use X because they had X in the, in the example. Uh, so, I didn't ask that. So. No, we didn't. I, Why right. you I, always it, confuse it us? Came from the story. Yeah, you always confuse us. <laughs> well, my hearing is so bad that it just. Please go. Mr. Ward, I can hear you all right now. I'm on. Okay. All right, but we're, they're going to ask you to do things where they, they have you pull things apart and try to figure out what the original problem should have been. It could have been something like this, where it where it's a x squared plus 3x plus 2. Um, actually, let's go, let's do this. No, let's go with, um, let's go with a 4 and a 4. Okay, so, and this is my function. And the book says, break this down into a composite function of the simplest form. So what I would try to do, if this is my problem, I would try to break it down by doing factoring skills. Because right now it doesn't look like I can just substitute things out. Because if I just took out an x and replace it, I'm talking about if I were to do something like this. Like factor this apart, do a piece of x plus 2, x plus 2. So that looks like it's x plus 2 squared. And so now, I can see that I have, I can see that I have a function where they're plugging something into a different one, where maybe the variable they pick, just somebody pick a different letter of the alphabet. T. T. No, I don't like T. It looks like J. 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 J is equal to X plus two, and they're going to replace all the X plus twos with J. So they'll do this. There's, there's the problem. I made it a composite function by taking one function and plugging it into another one. Where, now to write this even a little more goofy, so this is something you might recognize. Watch this. Oh, no, Z. Well, we'll call this the J of X function, where J, the function J, that's the name of it, has X's in it, you agree? Yeah. Yeah. And then they'll do this. F of J of X. F of J of X, where this is the J function, and it's squared, where they can do something like this, J of X squared. But, then they really but now why they would do something like that is because they would write it, yeah, where they could fill in this item in here, and we'll start substituting. So the, the type of problem that you've seen in pre-calc is they would do something like this. Yeah, that's not right. I think ice melt water is correct. Maybe. I agree. The whole thing is just wrong. It's just weird looking. Either. Water is not the water. There's no problem. You're going to have to do that. Yeah. They give you a problem. They're going to ask you to break it down into what it was separate. We're going to ask you to do that. Take this problem, separate it into its individual parts. Yeah, no, I can't. Blue is pretty good. Hey, here we go. Hey, one more talk. Shut up. 
Hey, stop talking to yourself. Just ask. Uh, G of X, X squared plus G of X. Okay. Now, the composite function they're going to ask you for. Okay. The composite function they'll ask you. This is what our traditional problems were in pre-calc. They give you your individual functions, and they're going to want you. Yeah. Um, they're going to want you to plug one inside another. They're going to ask, so they're going to have this in the directions. And they'll say, find the values for simplify the, the, the functions. Uh, simplify the following composite functions. Yeah. So, yeah, G of X. Y, X. They'll do something like that. Now, what this stands for, if you don't like this notation, is this. Where the idea is that. It's, um, if they use this little open circle, and sometimes they'll write it like this, this means the same thing. Um, the, the little dot means it's one inside the other. The main function is the first one. So that's the main function. So if I look over here, my G function is this one. So it's the x squared plus 3x, right? But I'm taking out the x's. And replacing with an x plus 4 Taking out these. And I'm replacing with anything that where f of x is, like what f of x is. Well, f of x is x plus what is that? Is it ever going to ask us, like, g of f of 2? Yes. Yeah. So you have to evaluate it at that point. Or 8. Point. Yeah. So this is, what, this is what normal pre-calc problems were like. We had that in the very yes, first. I remember this. Yep. Those are easy. Those are straightforward. You plug one inside the other. You simplify it down as far as you can until you can't go any further. So I would actually have to foil this out. It's going to be x squared plus 8x plus 8 8 Distribute 8 this through, plus 3x plus 8 right? 8 and then you simplify and add like terms. So it's going to be x squared plus 11x plus 28. Yeah. Um, but just make sure that you understand the notation they're using. Okay. Those are composites. What I know people are going to struggle with, though, is not these. These are the, these are the easy ones. It's going the other direction where they give you just something to look at and they say, what was it originally? Like, no. what were the yeah. parts break, yeah, broken up? That's the ones we're going to practice tomorrow. Okay. Now, I'm going to warn you right now because I'm doing this for my other geometry classes. Um, we're going to be in pods tomorrow. Just, you guys know the drill. Just walk and sit. We're going to do a couple practice problems where we try different problems out throughout the room. Just, it won't be in rows like this. Just leave them because I'll need them for, for geometry anyways because they're doing construction. So, no, um, I started mixing them in when we need them, so that way their pictures are a little more. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Those original years ago, I just did them at the end because it was kind of fun. Now I'm just mixing them in so we can get to more sections. No, it's that's fun. Horrible. Okay. Look at that, I just got right. so good. Alright, next. Now we're going to do inverse functions. Okay, inverse functions. Inverse. Inverse. Hey, please stop. stop. <laughs> All right. Let's do an inverse function. <laughs> All right, this function is linear. It's a y equals mx plus b. Um, how you know if a, if a function like this has an inverse to it is if you were to graph this function, which this function looks like this, roughly. It's going up to the right because it's got a slope of 3. It's, going, it's starting at negative 5. It's going up. That's gen generally what it looks like. If you can draw a horizontal line anywhere on this graph, just draw a horizontal line. It's called a horizontal line test and it only hits a graph once, it has an inverse. If it hits it twice, like if it has a curve, then there's no inverse, we won't be able to do the, the next part of the math that I'm going to show you. Um, now, what we have to do is we have to find what the inverse function was. Inverse functions are taking this thing and reversing it around, so instead of trying to find y, y is equal to, where you plug in x's, like this, where you plug in numbers here, and it spits out y numbers, we're going to try to plug in y numbers so it spits out x's mm -hmm. out of the things. I don't know if you can do that. So, to do that, what so I always you tell you to do to is replace f of x with the letter y, like I just did in my problem. So I'm going to write it over here. So that's my first step. 
replace the f of x with y or g of x, whatever it is. Replace it with y. Switch the two letters around. So yeah, so this is going to be x equals 3y minus 5. So we switch the two letters. Then you resolve for the y again to get y by itself. That way it's reversing the whole problem around. So if I were to solve for y, the first step you'd have to add the 5 across. And then we'll have to divide by 3 last. So my y would be equal to this. x plus 5, all divided by 3. Now if you can, if you divide each of these by 3, just do it. Because that's called a uh, law, or the definition of division, you can separate it. This thing, now that you have it completely solved where the y is by itself, you can replace this with this terminology. <coughs> this, this item that I've written here, that is the name of the inverse function. So if they put a negative one in the power of the function's name, that's the inverse function. So it's basically, if you were to plug in a, a number, it would spit out the opposite. So up here, I plugged in x to spit us out y's. Oh. That one, if I were plugging y's, it spits out x. You don't want to put the negative one after the x, you want it before so the x? Yeah, before the x. That's, that's silly. No, it's not. Okay, that's the inverse function's name. But the process you're looking at is how we actually do it. Um, certain functions have it, certain functions don't. To prove my point, if we were to do a function like this, this, so I'll call it g of x, this function does not have an inverse. Because it has a square. Because it's squared, and, and if we were to graph this thing, it would look like this, where it's been shifted up four. And if I were to do the horizontal line test, it's going to hit twice. This doesn't have an inverse. Is that what, negative x squared. Um, no, it's just a no, horizontal line test. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just gave you a high five to your vocabulary. Okay. <laughs> now, the reason why I bring this up, it's nice to know your transformations. So that when I looked at that function originally, I kind of knew what it was doing. It was just an x squared graph. They just shifted up. The certain graphs you're going to need to know, we're going to kind of review those tomorrow, like x squared graph, the cube graph, linear functions, you can recognize those right away. Um, that's, that's what I want you to recognize. Um, that way you can kind of tell if like, you can graph it or not, or do an inverse. Um, I would strongly recommend, like on these problems, if it's asking you to find an inverse, graph it into uh, Desmos first on your Chromebook to see does it even have an inverse, because that problem, I wouldn't even waste time doing it because I know I can't find the inverse function to it. It doesn't have one. So I, if they ask you to find the inverse for this function, if possible, that one's not possible because it fails the horizontal line test. I'd say that. No inverse fails horizontal line test. Move on to the next round. But if you can, these are the steps I do. Questions at all about inverse functions? No, sir. Okay, last note today. This is the absolute last note. What an inverse function actually does is it's taking um, data that you have. Data? Data. No, data. So if you have information like something like this, where you have a graph where these are the number of years and this is the temperature that's outside. Data? And you have, you know, you have numbers like this. Okay, so you have numbers, you have other temps up here, the average temp of the year, whatever it was, and it depends on location. 82, 94. 100. 76. 1,000. Let's, let's say that that's it. Okay. And, and whatever, let's say this is for, um, let's say this is for like California or something like that. These are the average temperatures that year. Um, what, what this would do is, if you had a function that represented this, these are the items you're in control of, and it spits out this. So there would be, shh, there would be an inverse function to this as long as it doesn't represent a parabola. Okay, um, because maybe maybe the numbers are just doing this. Maybe that's, maybe that's what it's showing. So we know I have an inverse, we can go find it. 
So if it did like one, then it'd be going like. Yeah. And so that would. There was a bunch of those. Yeah. So some. you just gotta look at what they're giving you and all that good stuff. So they got closer. All right. Just scorched. That's it for today. Homework. If you have not turned in your page 17, it will be the front or the back that was due today. I have a question. So. About this problem that I got wrong. Did I just need a simple background? Uh, no, it has to be the white person. So it's my chance. Oh no, Jane, your head is in the camera. Jane, the back head. Oh, well, it's pretty much. I know what you're getting.